Welcome to Play Practice Play Skill Acquisition Series Volume 1. This is Coach Lou Mignon. I will introduce to you the U.S. Soccer Grassroots Player Development Philosophy and its connection to Play Practice Play through its foundational principles of providing to players a reality-based, holistic, and experiential learning environment. We will examine the features of Play Practice Play and illuminate their significance for skill acquisition. We'll take a look at the big picture relating to youngsters in the U.S., and the challenges they face in terms of participation in sports and involvement in activities that promote overall health and wellness. We'll explore the concepts of technique and skill and highlight the implications of training for each. We will identify the six key qualities of the U.S. soccer player and correlate these competencies to what makes a skillful player. We'll visit different time periods in the evolution of coaching methodologies for developing skillful players, advancing from separating components for training to combining pairs or groups of components for training to the most modern methodology of play practice play and the holistic approach that trains simultaneously all four components technical tactical physical and mental we will then summarize the characteristics found within the most powerful learning environment for skill acquisition we begin by reviewing the u.s soccer grassroots player development philosophy at the grassroots level, children learn and develop to their full potential through game-like experiences in an enjoyable environment that supports individual growth. We relate this statement to each of the three key ingredients that make play practice play such a powerful learning environment for skill acquisition. Reality Base builds upon the idea that the game is the starting point and provides the context through the demands of the game for transforming technique into skill. Holistic describes the approach for getting to the heart of motivation for youngsters to play and meet their basic needs of fun and development, not only as players, but as independent critical thinkers. Experiential learning expands upon the idea that children develop their skills in a meaningful way by playing the game. This informal learning environment develops creativity, self-direction, collaborative problem solving, and of course, critical thinking. It is the practice time that youngsters put into activities they enjoy that will lead to development and learning. Play practice play is not the only coaching methodology, but it is the coaching methodology of U.S. soccer for coaching grassroots players for skill acquisition. This methodology is based upon extensive research into the basic needs of the American grassroots player. These basic needs have been identified as fun and development. Play practice play puts the player at the center of all decision making and empowers the player to take ownership of his or her soccer experience. Each phase of play practice play provides a reality based environment with a natural flow between the four moments of the game. These moments are attacking when we have the ball, transition from attacking to defending when we lose the ball, defending when the opposing team has the ball, and transition from defending to attacking when we win the ball. Every player contributes simultaneously to the game within play practice play and through this these players build an understanding of the structure of the game and roles functions and ultimately positions within the team. Player actions within the game are a starting point. Player actions found within play practice play for attacking include shooting, passing or dribbling forward, spreading out, creating passing options, supporting the attack, creating 2v1s or 1v1s, changing the point of the attack, changing the pace and or rhythm, and switching positions. Player actions for defending include protecting the goal, stealing the ball, making it compact, keeping it compact, pressure, cover, balance, outnumbering the opponent, staying involved, and marking the player or marking the area. All components are activated simultaneously during every one of these player actions. The components, of course, are technical, tactical, physical, and mental. In looking at the big picture, we know that 75% of youth players drop out of the game of soccer by the age of 13. Primary reasons for doing so are they're not having fun and they're not developing the skills to advance. Soccer has unfortunately become a rite of passage for many children in our country, and participation is typically limited to a few seasons before moving on to something else. 
we know that this is the first generation to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. This is primarily due to rising obesity levels and less active lifestyles. Children ages two and younger have a 68% chance of being obese by the age of 35. Are we able to use play practice play to stimulate players, keeping them active, and perhaps plant the seed for a lifelong love for the game of soccer? Distinguishing between the features of technique and skill could provide greater clarity into the reason for using play practice play as a powerful learning environment for skill acquisition. We relate the concept of technique to a form of movement, while skill on the other hand is the selection and execution of an appropriate action aimed at solving a problem that has been perceived and recognized by the player. Technique primarily focuses upon the specific set of movements and mechanics but skill combines a higher level thought process of reading and understanding situations within the complexities of the game environment and deciding upon the player action or actions that will be executed to solve these problems. Technique is practice within a controlled environment and with controlled conditions and involves repetition of a specific movement. Skill on the other hand attaches reading, deciding and execution and is applied within the context of the game. We can then expand upon the differences between technical training and skill training. The emphasis during technical training is upon how to perform a specified movement while skill training introduces the need to read, decide, and execute to solve problems that occur within the game environment. The aim of technical training is to perform an ideal movement while conducting a specified task. Skill training encourages players to explore and engage the learning cycle as they problem solve within the game environment. Technical training heavily relies upon the coach to correct errors and demonstrate the ideal movements. Skill training on the other hand offers meaningful autonomous learning moments connected to the game and the coach looks to facilitate this independent learning. U.S. Soccer identifies the six key qualities of the U.S. soccer player and these connect to the competencies of developing skillful players. Reading and understanding the game and making decisions. Does the player apply knowledge of the cues? Does the player read and analyze situations regarding attacking, defending, and transition? Does the player understand where and when to move themselves and the ball? Does the player align his or her own actions with other players and positions? Taking initiative and being proactive. Does the player create opportunities instead of reacting? Does the player confront situations? Does the player challenge opponents? Demonstrating focus. Does the player play to win? Does the player demonstrate bravery? Does the player deal with adversity? Does the player remain calm and composed? Executing with optimal technical abilities. Does the player show comfort with the ball? Is the player technically proficient to be effective? Is the player proficient in 1v1 situations to create or to regain the ball? Executing with optimal physical abilities. Does the player demonstrate physical awareness of what his or her body can do? Is the player coordinated in his or her movement? Taking responsibility and accountability for one's own development and performance. Is the player involved and engaged through every training session and match? Does the player deliver on agreements and promises? Is the player adaptable and flexible in dealing with unexpected challenges and problems? Does the player articulate his or her own learning needs? Does the player evaluate and reflect upon his or her own performance? What are the best methods for developing players within these six key qualities? Respective time periods between the 1960s and today have offered different paradigms of thinking. This has been based upon research into finding the most powerful learning environment for skill acquisition. Just as cellular communication has evolved through technological advances, so has our approach to coaching grassroots players. The late 1960s through the 1970s was a time period that we viewed soccer as a technical game. 
We therefore separated technique and trained it in isolation from the other components. This involved drills with rote repetition for dribbling, passing, receiving, and shooting. Coaches would expose players to a game environment only after technique was mastered. Players would stand in line for much of the time during these training sessions and wait for their turn to perform a specific action designated by the coach. The other components were addressed in isolation as well, through running laps and listening to lectures. The 1980s through the 2010s delivered an integrated approach known as economical training. The game was viewed as an interaction between multiple components. Components were often paired or grouped for training, such as technical and tactical, or physical and mental. Training sessions typically progressed through activities that became more game-like in nature. Extensive research into the basic needs of players, fun, and development brings us to the modern methodology and the methodology of U.S. soccer for coaching grassroots players for skill acquisition. Play practice play is the holistic approach. We now view the game fundamentally as a tactical game and decision-making by the players is of the highest order. Every player action is a response to a situation within the game. All player actions will permanently and simultaneously connect all four components, technical, tactical, physical, and mental. We now know that it doesn't make any sense to separate these components. They must be tied together. Training the technical aspects within the game situation makes it a skill. What are some key takeaways from the exploration of the most powerful learning environment for skill acquisition? Experiential learning allows for players to look for solutions to problems that are introduced within the game. The reality-based environment allows for players to read and understand the game and make decisions relating to individual and collective player actions. A holistic approach encourages risk-taking, exploration, and trial and error within a fun environment and helps to build independent critical thinkers, problem-solving skills, and increase self-esteem. 